Good morning. Hey. It's Rachel and Yeshua here joining you for Thursday morning live devotionals. And this is happening all summer long, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays. 9 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you are joining us, please feel free to drop a comment. If you are joining us later on, you can still engage and drop some comments. We mm -hmm. love hearing how these are impacting you or just to initiate discussion amongst our community of believers. Yeah. I think that's one thing I miss a lot. Do you miss that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The I think the discussion and the conversation that goes around all these things is, is um, one of the things that I miss the most, right? Just other people and, and not just speaking to a camera. <laughs> yeah, it's not even just the like spiritual discussions. I miss I miss spiritual discussions and I miss conversations uh, that grow my faith, but I also just miss the like mundane conversations. I find you can't talk about the mundane all the time with the person you live with. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't miss the mundane at all. Like it's <laughs> Okay, so we're wired differently and we proved that to you this morning. Hilarious. Well, if you're joining us, we are going to look at the book of John today, and I wanted to bring a little scripture towards you, thinking about what to share today. And uh, on Tuesday, I shared how I feel that in this season, we need to continue to dream, and we need to continue to uh, place goals in our life, and we need to continue steadfast on the call that God has placed on our lives. And this this might piggyback off that a little bit. Um, but I think uh, I think we'll read. Do you want to read it? Sure. Okay. Sure. So, read. so I'm just reading from John nine, uh, verses one to uh, seven. So you can follow along if you have your Bibles. Um, yeah. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Teacher, his disciples asked him, "Why was this man born blind? Was it a result of his own sins or those of his parents?" It is not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. He was born blind, so the power of God could be seen in him. All of us must quickly carry out the task, tasks assigned to us by the one who sent me, because there is little time left before the night falls and all work comes to an end. But while I am still here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smoothed the mud over, uh, smoothed the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means scent. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. So good. So I thought of this. Um, it's interesting how sometimes you, you get like a, an idea and, and it comes from reading. But this actually, I kind of had the idea and I recalled this reading. Like I hadn't been reading this passage and then thought of what to share. I, I thought of this idea to share because something sparked in my memory. And what sparked in my memory is that God makes miracles out of mud. And, and so that sentence kind of just kept coming to me as this idea of miracles out of the mud, miracles in the mud. And, and we're presented with a situation here where Jesus spits on the ground or spits in the dirt and he makes mud and he puts it on the man's eyes. And I was, I'm just so struck by this when I read it again, because one, it's gross, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, it's disgusting. A stranger spits, puts it on his eyes. Like, I'm sorry, maybe it's the coronavirus, but I don't want no spit on my eyes. Like, your spit, anybody's spit, I don't like spit. And I also don't like mud. So I avoid mud. If I'm going down a walking trail, I'm going to walk around it. I'm not going to go through that. I just... You know, I don't associate mud with good things, and I don't associate spit with good things. And yet, that's what Jesus uses to perform this miracle, and I think that that is so profound. Because what hit me about that is Jesus takes what's in his right there, right then position. He takes what is at his fingertips. He takes the mundane, ordinary, everyday life. And he uses it and turns it into a, a miracle, like a, this powerful demonstration of God at work. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that just hit me like a ton of bricks, like miracles out of the mud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I I often think back of like, you know, we we see God's grace often um, and God's plan and God's hand at work often in retrospect, right? And so um, I think at 
obviously this maybe who knows if, if this man even knew that what was being put on his eyes was mud created from spit um, but but everyone around him did um, and so and we have that story here so it's we know um, how how potentially gross it is but but it almost even seems disrespectful right like to, to just kind of hang out on this point a little bit um, like why mud of all the things like why spit in the ground to make mud why not just speak or whatever um, but I'm often reminded of of all the difficult situations that, that I've gone through or that we've gone through or that I know of others who've gone through and and it just seems really you know like why is this, like why of all the things that we could have done or of all the ways that we could have learned this lesson why is it that we're doing it this way and that's not by choice right or why is it that God has kind of led us in this path towards this thing and it's only when we come out on the other side that we can see God retro like we can see retrospectively God's hand at work and his miraculous power in our lives and we come out changed right he, he came out with sight at the end of this and it's not uh, just again to be clear like it's not by any fault of our own or because of anyone else's mm. fault sometimes right I mean sometimes our, our sin does lead us in a path of destruction but sometimes it's simply for God to be glorified in our lives and I think that's a it's a really difficult pill to swallow particularly uh, in the 21st century yeah I think that I think you hit on so many good points and I could just talk forever however just something I, that I immediately think of is is the age-old question why do good things happen to bad people and Jesus never promised a life that was easy, never promised a life that had no suffering in it. And I think that's kind of what the disciples are asking right here at the beginning of John. They're saying, uh, was it a result of his own sins or those of his parents? Like, is this punishment? Because this has got to be punishment because no person deserves this. And, and I love this because Jesus says it's not because of his sins or his parents' sins. He was born blind so the power of God could be seen in him. And all of us must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent me because there is little time left before the night falls and all work comes to an end. And I think that this is kind of where that charge comes from about what I was maybe mentioning on Tuesday about you have to pursue your call in the midst of the mud, right? Like, I think I, I love that Jesus used mud and he uses saliva and spit because he takes something ordinary, but he also like redeems something gross. He redeems something dirty. And out of that moment, he, he, he speaks to me that I have work to do. I have a task assigned me. And when my situation looks muddy, that I got to press on and I got to keep going for what the task is. And it also speaks to me that whatever resources I feel like I don't have and I can get in the complainy mode right and I can be like oh I don't have this and you know my woe is me my life is so hard um Jesus uses what he has right then and there and it seems like he has nothing and yet he has everything and it changes the man's life mm -hmm. and I think we miss that as Christians we have everything that will change everyone's life around us mm -hmm. if we only do the task assigned to us if we only go and make disciples if we only live out our faith with vigor you know mm -hmm. And, and he, he, he presents this to the man, and the man has a, has a role to play. He has to go and wash it off. And I think we all have a role to play. Mm -hmm. The recipient of grace and also the giver of grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. That's a, yeah, that's a great point. So that's just what we wanted to bring you today. Um, I'm wondering if you guys have an experience in your life where it seems muddy, I'd love to hear what are the muddy scenarios that God has brought you through and then on the other side you saw his sovereignty. <laughs> but I was in the middle of saying that uh, this man had a role that he had to play and there's a task for each one of us that God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of a muddy situation, in the midst of a circumstance that seems terrible, God works miracles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for sharing. No, thanks for joining us, everybody. We would love to hear stories of how God has worked a miracle in your muddy situation. So if Jesus has changed your mud into a miracle, please let us know. We'd love to hear about it. 
put it in the comments. Is there something that you have looked back on in your life and went, wow, that was God at work. And at the time I didn't realize it. So uh, please share with us. We would love to hear and share this video if you like it. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and yeah, we'll see you on Sunday.